Hello everybody, always dizzy here. Thought I would make a, a different type of video today. Um, maybe it'll help with the keywords on YouTube, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I just thought this was different and somewhat interesting. So as most of you should already know, um, but some of you don't, so I'll give a really quick introduction. But in chess, um, you may be familiar with PGN format, which is basically a um, recorded history of the game. It's, it's like a kind of a digital format of the game, which is really just a, a series of the moves in a text format. And you can easily import, export that um, to replay the game. Um, something similar is called um, the FEN, F-E-N, um, which is a code uh, or a string of text, which I will show here. Um, and what that does, and you might be familiar with this, as, as I say, it, it 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 basically encodes the position, or it it's um, it makes it easy to uh, take uh, just this one string and know exactly what the position of the board is. Um, so this is very useful when you want to uh, send somebody or yourself um, a particular position. It could be a puzzle, for example. So instead of manually editing the board and setting up the board, you can just copy it, the FEN from one chess program to another or from one site to another or from a website or wherever, and you can easily import the, 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 the position instead of manually editing the board. Um, so I, I, it, what I found interesting is just how easy it is to actually decipher the FEN code. And that's, that's kind of why I'm making the video. Cause it's, I, I just thought it was kind of interesting. Now, just a quick, um, just a few notes. I have a few notes here on my other screen. Um, yeah. So FEN stands for the, for the Forsyth Edwards notation um, because it was developed by, and I'm just going off of Wikipedia here, but this is, it was developed by a Scottish um, newspaper journalist named David Forsyth. Um, I'm not, oh, and I was going to, I wasn't quite sure where the Edwards came in, but, and then Edward, the Edwards part of it, the E of the Fen uh, was from Stephen J. Edwards, who basically took um, Forsyth's, uh, system and made it adaptable for computers. Um, so that's why it's called Forsyth Edwards notation. Um, now one, one of the, let me just adjust something here. So one of the things it doesn't cover is it, it doesn't know if, uh, there could be a threefold repetition on the board. So it doesn't track that because that is too difficult to track. You couldn't easily track that um, with the text here. It's just not really possible. Although there is another notation that does track that. Apart from that, it basically tracks everything else you need to know in a game. Surprisingly, just in this one string. And yeah, like w before, whenever I uh, like saw a, a fen code and let me just like make a, make a random position, like a terrible position on the board. Let me just Let's get something weird going here. Just some crazy, stupid position. Actually, no, let's make it, let's make it. Can I just jump to a game? Okay, whoops. So here's, here's a game from Magnus Carlsen. Um, let's just go deep into the game to make it a more realistic position. There we go. Um, <clears throat> and so here's, here's the fen, here's the fen code here. And um, it just looks like a weird random string of text, but it's actually extremely readable and uh, knowing how it works could be useful because these days everyone just has a phone. So you could just take a photo of, of a position and even convert it with different apps to the FEN code. But it, I don't know, I think it could still be useful to know how to translate this yourself. Um, for some reason, if you don't have a phone with you, for example, it could be useful to record a position. I know back in, in, in the old days, 
if I, I, I can even recall like drawing the actual chessboard, like eight, you know, eight by eight, and then writing like, or drawing a black king or a, a white queen. Um, but it's, it's really easy to, to, to write the fen code yourself, to convert the position to a fen code. And um, that's just it's so much more useful. Okay. So anyways, let me teach you how to convert it. So it's, it's actually really, really simple and very logical. Hopefully this isn't too small on the screen for you. Um, I'll open up Notepad, Notepad and um, increase the font size um, so that you can see it easier on the screen. Something huge. Oh, you can't see that, damn. Um, shoot. Um, cause yeah, the, the way I have this, okay, hang on. Let me add a, a new source. Give me a second. I can't pause my recording, unfortunately, and I'm going to be too lazy to edit it after. So let me just add this. Give me a second here. Cause right now I have it only recording my, my browser window, but I, I want you to see notepad as well. Okay. Here we go. There we go. Thanks for waiting. Okay. Shout out to like nineties kids TV show, Ghost Rider. This makes me feel like it's the Ghost Rider here. Okay. So this will be our Fen code. I'll put it, I'll put it here. Actually, let me adjust that down here a little bit. Actually there, something like that. Um, there we go. Hey, that worked out pretty well. I gotta say. And then we got that. Oh, that's that actually worked out very well. Okay. So to write the fen code, it always goes from looking at it from white's perspective. Um, and it starts from a eight down. So the first string of characters here, and I, let me copy and paste this into the into notepad. So the first there's eight different, or no, sorry, there's, um, I forget how many there are, but there are different, I don't know what we will call them, parameters maybe, to the fen code, and they're separated by a space. And I'll explain what these ones are later. For now, the first one is the, the, the position of pieces on the board. So this is all like the first parameter here. And you might notice that there are eight different um, portions of text, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you might logically deduce that that corresponds to the, 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 the ranks on the board. And so the first one starts from A8 and then it, it moves down like this. And so each rank is separated by a slash. And so the first one here, if there are empty spaces, if there are no pieces on the squares, it will give a number. So it, for the first one we have is a five because there are five empty squares. Then we have a king. So for black, black's pieces are all in lowercase. So we have a lowercase k. And then we have two squares here on g8 and h8. So we have a two and we've reached the end of the rank and we put a slash there. So that's why it's five, so five empty spaces, five empty, empty squares, a black king, so a lowercase k, and then two, because two blank spaces. A slash for the next rank, and we go from here. And so we have two blank spaces, right? So we have a two, let me highlight that. And then we have a queen, so a lowercase q, and then five empty spaces, so five. Um, I won't do the whole thing for you, but I think you get the idea. So here we have a pawn, lowercase p, three blank spaces, so we have a three, a rook, so a lowercase r, a pawn, lowercase p, and here we have a white queen, so it's a capital Q, and then a blank space for a one, and so on and so forth. Um, and that's how the fen code is created. Now the next, so then it's, there is a space which denotes the next parameter. I don't know if parameter is the right word, but that's what I'm using. And that will determine which um, side it is to move. So either a W or a B, 
So we know it's White's turn here. Um, and then a space again. Yeah, a space. Um, okay. Yeah, I, ha I have to read my notes here still. Yeah, so then we have a space. Where's my notepad? And the next parameter is is uh, is the castling ability. If neither side can castle, it'll be a dash. And um, otherwise, it will give either lowercase or or uppercase if you can castle kingside or queenside. So um, in this position, let me just copy this fen code, this new fen code here. So um, you can see here we have, this is a starting position. So we have rook, knight, bishop, <laughs> right? Queen, king, bishop, knight, rook, and, and so on. So you can identify this. Um, and then here we have it's white's turn to move because white moves first in chess. And then we have the castling rights. So here, um, both white and black are able to castle. So we have a capital Q, capital queen, uh, capital K, capital Q, and then lowercase K and Q. Now, if I were to make some moves on the board, and let's just say the bond cloud here, you, if you look, well, I, I know I'm hiding it, but I'll copy and paste the, the Fen code so you can see it here. So now it only shows um, a lowercase k and queen because only black and castle. Okay, I think that makes sense. Um, then we have a space denoting the next parameter, which I have to look up because I forget. Oh yeah. So the next one is the en passant. Um, so it, it denotes if en passant is available. If it's a dash, it means there's no en passant on the board. Otherwise, it will give the actual square where en passant is possible. So let me um, move this out of the way temporarily. And, I, and I, or should I actually, let me just hide it instead. That makes more sense. And I want you to look, it might be really small. You may have to full size this window if you're watching it on your phone. Well, it's going to be tough, but you can see the fen code at the bottom. Um, and so, yeah, after the castling one, we have en passant. And let me um, put that on the board here. So it's still a dash, but once en passant becomes possible here, like once I play a5, this turns into a6, see? So now a6 is where en passant is possible. So that's what that shows. Um, then we have a space again. I'll open up notepad again so you can see easier. Um, so let me just copy this exact position. Actually, no, hang on. Let me get back later. I want it not as long so you guys can see it easier. It might still be long. Yeah, there you go. Um, so in this position, so after, so there's no more passant, then we have this four. So a space and then a four. This parameter is um, the half moves until uh, since there's been either a capture or a pawn move, which you might guess is used to determine the 50 move rule. So if we keep moving, if we keep playing into the game, I wish I could just get an end game here. Um, let me make that. Oh, the game ended. I can't modify this. Uh, I can't actually modify the position. Or can I? It was resigned. Yeah, I can. Um, can I make a lot of captures really quickly here? Sorry. Ah, oh, the pressure. Okay, so in this position, um, I know I'm covering it up. So let me hide it again. So hopefully you can just see here, it's easier for me instead of copy pasting it every time. But here you can see zero, or you should see a zero here. And that's because there was just a, um, a capture in the last move. But if I make a king move, you see this turns to a one, two, three, four, right? So these are the half moves, but, and 
if we get to, we, we, I guess this could go to like 99, right? If I won't bother making 99 moves, but it should, cause these are half moves. So, well, maybe I will. No, I don't want to make 99 moves, but you get the idea. Those are the half moves since a, a pawn move or a capture. If I make a pawn move right now, it goes to zero. But if we move the Kings again, then it, it increments. Okay. And then finally, so a space and then another number. The final number is simply what move it is. So you can see this is move 57, so it's 57. So there you go. Um, as simple as that. Uh, so you, if you look at any, any position, you, you should be able to understand how the Fen code works. Um, it probably won't, won't be that useful for you in the future, but I, it's, it's good to know these things. I mean, it's interesting. I found it interesting. Um, okay. Anyways, thought I'd share that with you guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you next time.